Hey guys, welcome to the PHP front to back series. Now initially this was going to be a crash course in one video, but I find that crash courses limit what I can show you because I don't like making them longer than 45 minutes to an hour. And my goal for this series is to teach you an entire language, not just get your feet wet, but teach you start to finish, or rather front to back. Now, like with any technology that I choose to do videos on, some of you are going to be saying, damn it, I hate PHP. Uh, but I would still encourage you to watch the series and learn it because whether you like it or not, PHP is all over the place. And you don't have to like it to learn it. All right. Now, a little while ago, I realized that my channel has so much JavaScript and, and so many frameworks and very little PHP. And I actually know more about PHP than I do JavaScript. All right. So once this series is over, we'll do another language. Okay. So uh, whether it's Python or Java or anything else. Basically, I want to have a channel that anyone can go to to learn anything when it comes to programming. All right, so that's my little spiel. Now let's take a look at what's included in this series. Now this is just what I came up with in a few minutes. I'll be adding things as we move along. But we're going to start with uh, talking about what PHP is and why you would use it. And we'll try to get that out of the way in this video. Uh, then I'm going to show you how to get PHP set up on your machine. Now PHP needs a server to run, so we're going to be installing a software suite called XAMPP, or also pronounced XAMPP, which will give us an Apache server, PHP, MySQL, and a tool called PHP MyAdmin to manage databases. Okay, I'm using XAMPP because it's cross-platform. Now I'm using Windows, but it's also available for Linux and Mac. Okay, and you don't have to use that. There's a lot of other tools you can use, or you can just set up a, a LAMP stack. Um, in fact, it doesn't matter what environment you're working in for this series, the code is all the same. All right, so we'll also look at the basic code syntax, such as variables, arrays, loops, conditionals, etc. Um, I'll try to combine a couple of those into single videos so that we don't have an entire video on just variables. All right, even though I do want to really get into the syntax. So PHP is very flexible, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but I'll be showing you how to use procedural programming as well as object-oriented programming and how to create classes and so on. All right, we'll also create dynamic web pages and we'll look at includes and how, how to write code without repeating yourself. We'll look at form submission and super globals, uh, how to make and receive get requests and post requests. We'll also be working with databases, most, mostly at MySQL, but I'll also show you how to use Postgres and maybe even something like MongoDB. All right, and then once you learn all the basics, we'll go ahead and create some mini projects, such as a contact form, a user login system, and then maybe at the very end, we can do uh, a big project. All right, so now that we know what's gonna be in the series, uh, let's talk a little bit about what PHP is and some of its basic principles. So PHP has stood for a couple different things throughout the years. It now stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. So it is a recursive acronym. Uh, it was created back in 1995 by a guy named Rasmus Lerdoff. Okay, PHP is an open source server-side programming language or scripting language. Uh, so all PHP is hosted on a server and uh, it's not like JavaScript that can be run on the user's client machine. It needs, to, it needs a server to run, okay? And Apache is the most popular type of server that PHP runs on, but uh, you can use other things as well. Uh, Apache is part of the LAMP stack, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Um, and that's an extremely popular stack to work with. All right, uh, let's see. So PHP can be directly embedded into HTML markup. This is one of the, the huge advantages of PHP. Uh, we need to use PHP tags when we do that, which we'll talk about later. Um, and then in order for PHP to run, the file has to have a .php file extension. So even if your HTML file is on the server, it won't process the PHP unless it has the right file extension. All right, so uh, let's take a quick look at how PHP works, okay? So if you look at this image over here, on the right, it starts with a user on a client machine making a, a page request, usually uh, to a PHP file. Then the server processes that request and uses a PHP interpreter. Okay, PHP also has a bunch of extensions. Some are enabled by default and you can add and remove extensions. And then if you know enough, you can even create your own. 
Now, while PHP is being processed, it has the ability to work with a database. Uh, that's one of PHP's best features is that you can use it with almost any type of database. MySQL is probably the most popular one for at least for small and medium sized applications. Um, it can also interact with other files on the system. You can read from other files as well as write to them. Okay, once the processing and the interpreting is complete, it'll send the result to the client or the browser. Now it's important to understand that the actual PHP script and the PHP programming isn't sent to the browser. It doesn't work like it does if you were just requesting an HTML page. It sends the result of the script. Okay, and this is usually HTML, but PHP can also send plain text, JSON, XML, PDFs, etc. All right, but it usually just sends the HTML result. If you were to view your source code in, in your browser, you'll see the HTML, you'll see the client-side JavaScript, you'll see the CSS, but you won't see the PHP. All right, so most developers either love or hate PHP. I just did a video called Should You Learn PHP? Pros and Cons. So I'm not gonna dive deep into the advantages and disadvantages. You can check that video out if you want and learn a little bit more about that. Uh, but some advantages are that it's very easy to learn when you compare it to other server-side languages. Uh, it's not typed. You don't have to define your data types and so on. Um, it's free and completely open source. There's a ton of support on the internet. Uh, there's really good documentation. And so many people know it, know PHP, that you can always find help when you need it. All right, it's also completely cross-platform. Like I said, it can run on Windows, Linux, Mac and uh, usually runs on an Apache server but can use other types of servers as well. Okay, PHP also gives you a lot of freedom which I said could be either a good thing or a bad thing uh, but it allows you to be unique and original but at the same time it allows people to write horrible code Okay, uh, because there's less structure and, and it's less strict. PHP also has a ton of frameworks some are great, some are not. Uh, Laravel is probably the most popular right now I also like Symfony and Code Igniter, which is really easy to learn. Um, and then PHP is also very compatible with almost any type of database. Okay, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and even NoSQL databases like MongoDB. So you can do a lot of stuff with PHP. It can pretty much do anything that any other server-side language can do. It can create dynamic page content, interact with other files on the server, um, and files of all different types. It can also collect information from web forms and process them. It can send and receive cookies to and from the browser. It can also use sessions, which we'll talk about later. Uh, it can create, read, update, and delete data from a database. And it can implement access control on your website. It can encrypt data and just about anything else. All right, so here's a couple of uh, types of websites and applications that are usually created with PHP. So basic websites like a business site or something like that. Blog type websites where your content is stored in a database and pages are created dynamically. Shopping carts or e-commerce sites. Social networks where people can register and log in. Um, you can easily encrypt passwords. Content management systems. In fact, PHP is used with all the, the most popular CMS applications such as WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, and there's a bunch of others as well. All right, um, you can make membership websites with access control. You can build search engine engines and make complex full text search queries. And you can also build backend APIs, including uh, RESTful JSON APIs. All right, so I don't want to take any more time up with these slides. Now we're going to jump in and we're going to set up PHP and we'll start to code.